Today, I want to talk about the five biggest expenses in retirement. We're going to talk about what those expenses are and how it compares for those that are in the 65 to 85 category versus kind of all households. Uh, hopefully, this will help you do some planning if you're looking at retirement and kind of see how you stack up. I think it is important worth noting that on average, retirees do spend quite a bit less, but their spending within categories can really vary a lot versus the average household. My name is Scott Caulfield. I'm a CPA and a CFA charter holder and the founder of Sophos Wealth Management. So the Bureau of Labor Statistics released this data in late 2023. It's actually based on 2022 survey data. This comes from the Consumer Expenditure Survey. So it's one of the better sources of data we have on household spending. We'll start with kind of where, where overall spending is at. An average household spends just under $73,000 per year. That's across all ages. For retirees, it is 21% lower. So those in the 65 to 85 category are spending around just under 58,000 per year. And in fact, that's gonna be lower for the households 75 and up, kind of uh, around 53, 54,000. And it's gonna be a little bit higher for households 65 to 74. That's gonna come in at just under 61,000. So uh, many retirees do plan for overall expenditures to come down and we do see that, but it varies a lot within category. So let's start with the largest category first. Not surprisingly, it is housing. Housing is gonna comprise about 35% of households 65 and older's um, overall expenditures. So this is coming in at just over $20,000 for those households. That is still by far the number one expense um, for those in retirement. I think it surprises people sometimes um, because the goal is to pay off their mortgage and they think housing costs will go down significantly. And while they do come down somewhat, you still have real estate taxes, homeowners insurance, you gotta pay for maintenance and upkeep, um, you know, potentially outsourcing more services around the household. Uh, a lot of things kind of add up in this category. Uh, in fact, it is a larger percentage of those 65 and up spending than it is for the average household, 35% versus 33%. So it does come down 16% um, in retirement, but that is not as big as the overall drop of overall spending in retirement. The second largest category in retirement is gonna be transportation. Um, now this does come down uh, pretty significantly. It comes down 34% versus the average household in retirement, but spending is still over $8,000 per household in retirement on transportation. Now this does include things like travel as well. Um, that might be a component of it. Uh, but yeah, you're looking at over $8,000. Uh, average household is looking at more like $12,000. So this is still a big expense category, obviously public transportation, cars, travel, insurance, so on and so forth. So something to certainly keep in mind. Um, you know, it is gonna come down to about 14% of overall spending on average versus more like 17% um, for the overall households. So this one does drop more than average in retirement. If we look at the third category, we go into healthcare. Now, a lot of people are well aware, healthcare costs are going to rise in retirement. It certainly helps for those 65 and older that you can go on to Medicare. So if you're gonna retire before 65, your healthcare costs are likely gonna be much, much higher if you are not getting healthcare through an employer because those premiums are so high. But even the average household in retirement is going to spend more on healthcare in retirement. So you're looking at spending of around 7,500 for those households 65 to 85, and that is actually 29% higher than the average household who's spending more like 5,800. Uh, not surprising given all the kind of ailments, prescriptions, so on and so forth that we have to deal with and pay for in retirement. But it is important to be mindful of that. I think this one can be challenging from a planning perspective because we obviously don't know what kind of health issues might pop up. Um, but certainly we want to take that into account in your planning uh, for your retirement. 
Fourth largest category would be food. Um, this is another one. It is going to come down about on average as much as overall spending. So in retirement, it's come down about 22%. That would put spending around 7,300 per year, uh, down from about 9,300 for all households. Uh, and this does include both food in the house, groceries, and food spent eating out. Last category I think is kind of interesting one is spending on taxes. There is no category that comes down as drastically in retirement as taxes. In fact, the, the average household, 65 and up, spends almost one third of what the average overall household spends. So you're talking about 3,400 versus almost 11,000 for the average household. Uh, you know, a big source of this is because most retirees receive a bulk of their taxable income or bulk of their income from Social Security. Uh, I think according to the IRS, somewhere close to half of uh, Social Security beneficiaries don't even have to pay taxes on those. And even those who, have, who are in higher tax brackets, only 85% of Social Security might be taxable. Uh, in retirement, you do have a lot more levers to pull with taxes too. You can kind of choose sometimes when you're going to do your withdrawals or the amount of withdrawals. I mean, assuming you're not subject to RMDs. Um, you know, interest and withdrawal and IRA withdrawals are not subject to payroll taxes. Uh, capital gains, if you've got those, and qualified dividends are going to receive preferential tax treatment. So, lots of tax advantages for those in retirement and a little bit more flexibility. So, this is a nice one, uh, but definitely something to keep in mind. And I think this is a fun one for me. You know, being a CPA, I see a lot of tax planning opportunities in terms of timing some withdrawals, in terms of how we want to kind of sequence or order withdrawals from different tax advantage versus non-advantaged accounts. Um, so big opportunities here. Now, the rest of the spending combined adds up to a little less than, or a little more than 20%. Uh, this, this can be things like entertainment and um, just kind of all other categories. But hopefully breaking down these, these five major categories gives you some great starting points for planning your retirement or looking at if you're in retirement, kind of how you stack up. Uh, please like this video, share it, and subscribe to my channel. And uh, I encourage you to visit my website if you want to get more information. Thanks a lot.